I got a fright the other day. I was on Instagram and a picture popped up that said, only 60 days to go until the Manchester Marathon. It scared the life out of me to think it's only 60 days away. But I'm even more scared now because that was five days ago. Get active with Midlands 183. Powered by HearMed Healthcare in the heart of Tullamore. Here when you need us. HearMed.ie It's week 10 into our 18-week training course. And Cahill Egan and Physio Central took me to the Strength and Conditioning Centre in Tullamore for a different kind of workout as this calf muscle continues to recover. And then later on in the week, I took to the gym myself to do... 40 minutes of cardio on Wednesday, an hour and 15 on Thursday, and on Sunday, I did it. I completed a marathon. Well, on me bike, I completed a marathon. But I did just a little over a marathon distance. I went for 45 kilometers on the bike as opposed to 42. So I'm still out of action when it comes to running for now. But it was nice to experience and see how far I'll have to go on the big day. Uh, Currently, I am on the Greenway. And I am 9 kilometers from Moat, 20 kilometers from Athlone, and 20 kilometers or so from Mullingar. So uh, it's gorgeous day here in the Greenway. Beautiful weather, lovely. So hopefully I'll experience this on foot very, very soon and not on the bike. It really hit home, the actual distance you have to go to complete a marathon. And after a long cycle on Sunday, Cahill Egan from Physio Central in Tullamore brought me into the Strength and Conditioning Centre in Tullamore for a strength and conditioning class. Cahill tells you exactly what we did. So we just went through a quick warm-up as you were doing kind of with, with, with the run and Always, any session we're doing really, we'll just go through that. We went through a couple of the exercises that we're doing for the uh, Salius issue we're talking about. Again, looking a good bit better. Then I just had to set up a small circuit of rower, air bike and ski machine. We set up a three minute interval session, 30 second rest. We did two rounds of that on the tree. So we got about 18 minutes in total of workout. We were kind of working at around... What were we saying? About 50% on them, 50-60% is roughly what we were aiming for. So we wanted to get the lungs working a little bit on this one. Again, as you're saying, you're kind of missing the running, that little bit of speed work at the moment. So we said this is kind of crossing over a little bit towards that. Same sort of setup as a speed run session, same intensity rest periods in between. Mm. So because we were talking about that during the session there. And we're trying to get a little bit of an idea of what is safe for this injury to work on. Roar is fine as long as the feet are kind of well secured into it salt bike looks fine mm. arms are doing a little bit of work on that too so they're t- taking a little pressure off ski machine then we we set the movement that we weren't doing a whole pile of up on the toes and down and that yeah. so um yeah we'll see how you feel tomorrow and we'll be following up next week but uh yeah thing, things are looking pretty positive there i'll probably get you a little plan in place that you can work on yourself um go search in your own gym and see what's what's in it that we can yeah. make use of to make things a bit more interesting and uh how often should you do a session like that call would you maybe once a week yeah. along with your runs or your cycles or yeah with, with the runs a general generally general recommendation would be to work on um a speed session once a week or once every 10 and 12 days okay. again it's dependent on what distance you're doing what kind of aim you're doing but for marathon training yeah they're saying um about once a week or if you're doing three to four runs or one of them should be a speed session again depending on your goals time you're setting for some people may vary speed session some people might not do a speed session if they're just looking to do to, to finish mm-hmm. it or they mightn't do very specific speed sessions for now we're just trying to work with what we have and work around this injury give it a chance to heal um, and still trying to keep them lungs and the rest of the body working somewhat <laughs> So it's myself and my marathon buddy Christopher Cribben who are going to head to Manchester on April 14th and run the Manchester Marathon. So while my training is a little bit different lately, uh, Christopher is still pounding the pavements. So let's check in with him and see how he's doing. Today I was supposed to do my long run, which is supposed to have been the operative words, but yeah. Um, yeah, long story short, got about two and a half mile in. The arch of my foot, I got an awful pain on it. So thankfully I wasn't too far away from home. So I finished out for four miles, but anyways, a bit of a 
pain in my foot at the minute, so give it maybe a day or two. I don't know, I might have forgot my insole or something yesterday. I don't know, I haven't had this pain in a long number of years, so I don't know what the story is. But anyways, other than that, training's going, going all right for me anyway. So, look, can't wait to have you back, lad with their company in the long runs and stuff like that but I hope you're keeping well bud oh no injuries are not only a pain in the injured area but they're a pain in the well look you know what get well soon Chrissy. we will be back out on the roads together very very soon so as you know we're on week 9 of our get active with Midlands 103 and the challenge is to see if anyone can do a marathon with 18 weeks training. I'm joined by a man who is um, very familiar to endurance running and uh, he's completed 32 marathons in 32 days and what an incredible achievement that is. Mullingar's very own Jerry Duffy. How are you? I'm great. Thanks Peter. I'm delighted to be chatting with you. Jerry, I love your book Who Dares Runs and can I take you back to that and can I take you back to the picture? The thing about the picture is it resonates with me so much. But uh, can you tell us the story about that? Sure. So the picture I, I would imagine you're referring to is a picture that was taken, gosh, nearly 30 years ago. So I'm in my mid-50s now, but back in the mid-20s, I was, I guess, quite different, leading a very sedentary life, eating the wrong foods, doing little or no exercise. You know, just just it had kind of crept up on me over a number of years and... I had a photograph taken. I, I, I met my sporting hero. I was kind of into golf as a kid, and some people might remember the name Severiano Ballesteros. And he was the he was in his time the greatest golfer in the world, big hero to me. I met him. I got a picture with him. But when I got the photograph developed, I was unhappy with how I looked myself in the photograph because I was four and a half stone heavier than when I had left school ten years earlier. And so I decided to use the photograph to kind of motivate myself to kind of do something about, you know, how I was living my life and trying to trying to affect a change. So that kind of stimulated maybe a, a decision in me to kind of do something about it. And, and what I did was I, I, I took up running. It resonates with me so much, Jerry, because I have one of those pictures at home. I'm a big Man United fan. And back in 2008, when Manchester United won the, the double, the European uh, Championship, the Premier League, I got my picture taken with both trophies and I have my hands wrapped around them. The picture means so much to me, but I've never hung it up because I hate the way I look in it. I'm I'm overweight, I'm puffed out, and uh, the jersey I'm wearing is a large jersey. And that for me as well was one of those pivotal moments where you go, nah, enough is enough. I just have to stop. My kind of thinking around it now is I kind of, I am who I am. I'm a, I'm a sum of everything I've ever done in my life, but I kind of have a really good kind of mindset around the time because it kind of it, it kind of set me on a different path in life, you know, that over time I, I kind of evolved into, a di- you know, quite a different person from maybe being kind of lacking in ambition to kind of exercise. Because I kind of, I instantly kind of fell in love with running. And it, it kind of, I, I used to run and thankfully still do run very early in the mornings. And, you know, if I hadn't kind of maybe gone through that period, maybe I, I never would have found running. True, yeah. And running has definitely kind of been a huge, huge, um, has become a huge interest in my life, but has brought so much value to my life, not just in terms of the, maybe the, the physical benefits, but also the mental benefits and also the fun benefits to the point that I, 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 I've never stopped it. I, I still do it now. Maybe don't run the distances I, I might have ran in the past, but I still run almost every day. You know, it's, sometimes it's a very modest distance, sometimes it's a little bit longer, but I've never not gone for, for, for exercise and, and obviously in this case running and not felt better mm, having true. done it. And I guess that all arrived from, from maybe some poor choices that I was making at that time. I set myself a task. Okay, you've got 18 weeks to train for a marathon. I've got no endurance background. I've never done anything more than a 5K. I'm wondering, Jerry, how does that compare to some of the challenges you've undertaken? I think it's all relative. You know, at one time in my life, you know, I can vividly remember my first marathon, probably the hardest one I've ever done because I, I made, a, made a mistake. I went out too fast, which is, a, which is a, a quite a common mistake for people that might be new to it. Mm. And I, I made that mistake and I, I kind of, you know, I had a very challenging day as a result of that. Um, but I think it's it's all relative. If if I was, I'm not at the, the level of fitness now to, to run a marathon. I, I could probably run a half marathon, I would imagine, tomorrow if, if, if I put my mind to it because I am at a good level. But if I want to go back and run a marathon, I'll have to go back and do all the training that's required 
required. And I think it's all relative, though, um, and Peter, at, at this time, you know, for somebody else, the equivalent could be doing that 5K that you're talking about. It could be equally as hard as what you're on the journey to now. So I think we must always remember that, that it's, it's challenges are different things to different people. And maybe we are where we are at different times in our lives as well. I love in the book, Jerry, when you, you, you speak about your first marathon in Dublin. I love in the book how you describe it. And not only could I see it in my head when I was reading, I couldn't put the book down. I, I could see it. I could feel it. But as well, Jerry, I <laughs> it made me nervous, number one. And it made me exhausted, number two, from uh, what you went through. I think it was it after the 20 mile mark when you hit the wall. Yeah, I, I did. I made a classic error. And, and you know, my my if, if, if I was, if somebody did ask me for advice in it, you know, one of the most important things I think to do is to respect it. And respect, I guess, comes in many forms. One is doing the training that we need to do, uh, tapering as we need to taper that that period when you kind of drop the volume of training just in the weeks before it. But also respecting the event that running what you train for. And, and I, it, I guess a lot of naivety on my part because I didn't. I went out too fast. And even in mile one, mile two, mile three, I was feeling great. But, but my body was paying attention to the fact that I was running too fast. I wasn't, but my body was. And it was only in the later miles that my body said, well, wait a second. Now, you went way too hard, you know, in the first two or three miles there. And now we're kind of going to, well, you're going to pay for that now, you know. And, and it's all because of that mistake I made. So if I was doing it now again, I definitely would stick to the time. You know, I, I'd, I'd work out what kind of times, relative to time I want to finish in, what does that equate to per mile? And I'd make sure I run that time in mile one and I'd make sure I stick to that time in mile two and three and four. And I guess that's an example of respecting it because it's only in the later miles that all the training we do and all the early pace miles on the day itself, it, it all kind of gets us ready for the last six, seven miles. So it's very important, I think, that we do follow the plan as it were. You hit the nail on the head there, respect the marathon. When we started this off, we kind of said, okay, let's try and finish the marathon in five hours. If I can do it in five hours, I'll be happy. But then (laughs) my brain kicked in as soon as the training was going well. My brain said, hold on for a second, we could do this in four and a half maybe. And then the training went even better and better. I thought I'd hardly do it in under four. And then I got injured and then I just went, how stupid was that? So there has to be a difference, Jerry, between as you say, respecting the marathon, but being realistic in your head compared to your physicality. Yeah, I, I think I particularly, well, for, for, you know, in this context for the first marathon, it's guaranteed to be a personal best, whether it's five hours, six hours, four hours. It, it's going to be your personal best every time because by its very definition, it's the first time you've done it. And I think sometimes, you know, with the first one, I think that's a good attitude to have. Whatever the time is, the time is. Mm. I have learned that, you know, I guess I've been lucky enough to do lots of them since. I've learned an awful lot. But, you know, it's something I talk about quite a lot is our success index is determined by your effort index. And, you know, if, if I wanted to do a marathon at a particular time, you know, that, that, that is, is something that's achievable for me, I then need to go and, well, what's the training plan that's going to deliver that time and to follow that training plan? And usually, you know, when, you know, when we have a good coach on board kind of guiding us with these things, you know, based on our, our you know, I used to typically run a half marathon three to four weeks out as, as part of my kind of, you know, my final training kind of, you know, in, in that period. And I would usually try and go quite hard on that, knowing that I still have that three or four weeks to recover before the big day. And usually that half marathon time, there's usually good calculation you can do, which will give you an indication of what you're likely to run the marathon in three, four weeks later, assuming weather conditions are okay and assuming that you feel good on the day. And, it, it, you know, I think for me, that's an important parameter as well. So if that's saying, for example, four hours, not to maybe try to do it in 345 or 350 because Mm. it's saying four hours for a reason. So there's another example maybe of respecting the challenge itself. You've done 32 marathons in 32 days. Where did that crazy idea come from? I'm still trying to get over my first one. Yeah, so I did, as I mentioned, I fell in love with running. I, I, I eventually went to do my first marathon. I was, even though I had a really difficult day, I couldn't wait to sign up again kind of stuff. I, mm. I was hugely 
got the bug, got the buzz of it. And I was also doing triathlons in that period of my life. I, I could up to arm distance triathlons at that time in my life. And I, 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 I love to take inspiration from other people. I surround myself with, with people like some people I've never even met. I might read a book. Um, I just might see them in, in, in you know, the social media world, somebody that, or, you know, somebody might, somebody might recommend somebody. And anyway, I, I, I love to learn from other people. I'm very, I'm always reading books and that kind of thing. And I remember at that time in my life, I read a book and I was very inspired by the book. And I, out of the book, I got an idea. It was about a guy that had done something similar in the United States. I said, oh my gosh, you know, I, I'm going to do that here. I'm going to run a marathon in every county. And I came up with that idea in 2008 but you know i really wanted to do it i was up to good level of fitness as i said i kind of done done i had a marathon or two under my belt i had done some iron iron distance triathlons which is a i guess a very very strong level of fitness and um, but i said well i said still i'm not nearly fit enough for that to run 30 marathon 30 days so an example of respecting it was I wanted to do it within a year. But I said, no, I said, that's not realistic. It's not respecting it. You, you need two years to train for this. So I spent two years training for it, Peter, and, and, you know, did everything that I said I was going to do. So I spent the first year raising the bar even higher. And then I got, you know, got very, very fit, even relative to, to what I'd done before. And then I said, right now I need another year to kind of prepare for that. And so that's how the, the whole event came about. Wow. How do you prepare to run something that nobody's ever ran before, Jerry? Yeah, I think, number one, you know, you get good advice. And, you know, I, I surrounded myself with people that were smarter than me. And, and I, I got great, great running advice from an ultra distant runner, somebody who I held in very high esteem. And I went to him for advice and I said, you know, what advice do you have for me? He said, could you help me with the training program? So he, now I was at a very high level of fitness, but he gave me a training program specifically designed to be able to run multiple marathons in multiple days. And I, I, I literally followed the training program to, to the nth degree. I, 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 you know, typically it was done in volumes of weeks. And, you know, like, as I say, I spent two years training for it. Um, but the final 23 weeks were specifically targeted with the particular ambition in mind. But also, I remember even on day one of the 32 marathons and 32 day challenge, and there was two of us with it. There was a friend of mine, Ken Whitelaw, and I did it together. And But I remember on day one, you know, this was all about running 32, not one, not five, not 25, but 32. And we were very conscious of respecting that. So one example of that was on day one, we ran a marathon time that was very comfortable for us, knowing that we would be doing it the next day and the next day and the next day. Mm. And by doing all the training, by respecting it, by taking that period to train in the lead in, and by respecting the early days where we ran at a very comfortable pace, the body actually started to adapt to it. And we, we you know, yes, we had some challenging days for sure, but we, by easing into the event over time, when I look at my times now, if I reflected on them, every week I actually start to get faster. But I think that was because, number one, I respected it. But number two, the body actually did get used to it. And it, it taught me that that we are capable of doing, you know, really great things in life, whether it's running a marathon because or multiple marathons. It can be just a metaphor for anything that we might want to achieve. If we get really focused, we put into the training, we respect the challenge and we and we go and do it. So many things are possible for us to achieve. What was the biggest challenge during the uh, 32 marathons, Jerry? I think the biggest challenge for me, Peter, was so I mentioned Ken, Ken uh, was running with me and Ken got injured early. Now, he did manage to finish it, but he ended up having to walk a number of them because of some physical injuries that he got. But we had also, we were doing it for charity as well. And as a result of that, people were coming and running one day with us. So when we would be in a particular county, people that lived in that county would have trained to come and run that day with us. The next day, we'd meet different people. And all those people had trained for months and months and months. And there was a huge amount of expect, you know, when Ken got, I think it was on the sixth day, King quite dodgy for a few days. Was he going to be able to continue? And it was there was a bit of jeopardy around that. And I remember thinking, oh my gosh, if if 
he's not able to do this. That just leaves me. And, and we felt that, you know, we had to be there. We had to be a part of it. So, oh my gosh, if I get injured now, you know, what about all those people that have kind of dedicated their training and want to be a part of this? Is the whole thing going to unravel? So I felt a huge weight of, of, of I'm being honest, that was probably the biggest thing. But thankfully, we had great physios that helped us along the way. And they nurtured him. They nursed him back to health. To the point that in the last week, he was back running somewhat freely again and, and running reasonably good kind of times relative to his ability as well. So it did all work out, thankfully, happily in the end. I don't think a marathon is something you can do on your own, Jerry. Just from my experience so far in this, like um, I've got a great uh, running partner in Christopher Cribben who's ran loads of marathons before and he's there to advise me. You know, I've got a great physio as well and a colleague in Tullamore. We got great advice of um, EduFit in Port Arlington in terms of nutrition and that. I don't think it's something you can do on your own, is it? I, I, I'm sure some people might have, but I, I think for the vast majority of us, not just maybe in those physical, you know, the people that you're surrounding yourself with, I, I think that's a great idea. Even in the training as well, I think it's great because, you know, you, you're going through the same experiences. One person can maybe lift you, the person if they're having a difficult mile in a run or even a difficult day not wanting to run. But definitely, I talk a lot about surrounding yourself with great people. And, you know, even when I'm, when I'm, even if I run marathons on my own, maybe in training, or whatever, but I still, I still have people with me. It might be just in my mind. And, you know, I, I have some very inspirational role models that I surround myself with. Some of these people I've never met in my life. Some of them are dead many, many years ago. But I'm very inspired by what they've done when they were on the earth. And I might think of those people, if I'm at mile 15 on my own in a training run or something like that, and I'm struggling a little bit, I think of those people and I say, oh my gosh, you know, look what they did in their lives. You know, how lucky are you to be out here doing this? Yeah. And so I think there's different ways that we can surround ourselves with people. But definitely your approach, I think, is a great one. Uh, and if at all possible, I would encourage people to train with other people and, um, you know, get the physios, get the nutrition, get the advice and maybe get the inspiration because it makes the journey so much easier if that's possible. Absolutely. And maybe so much more fun as well. I'm fascinated with the mindset behind um, people who run marathons as well, Jerry. Um, I always imagine there's something more than somebody who just likes to run. You know, it might be somebody who wants to achieve something, somebody who wants to prove something to themselves. But in your case, Jerry, you didn't initially want to do a marathon. You initially wanted to do an Ironman that contains a marathon. Am I right? Yeah, well, I, I did first. I, I did the marathon first, but in in the Ironman, yeah, there is a there is a, a full marathon as part of that. I think, you know, I, I went and I, I did the marathon. I, I did all the different distances in triathlon. You know, the, the the sprint distance, the Olympic distance, half Ironman, and then every time I I did a particular distance, I, I had such an interest in it at that time. But I still have a huge interest in running now, but at the time. I, I guess I, I wanted to find out what was my what was my potential. I really wanted to tap into give me something hard to reach time. So that's why I kind of kept raising the bar. I, I just had such an interest in it, such a passion for it. And um, I, I I just loved the, the idea of training for something that was very hard. It might take you six months or 12 months. That people were telling me, you can't do that. That's impossible. Whether it was... You know, doing a half marathon or, or an iron distance triathlon, you know, unless we've done them, we might think, how on earth do you do that? Um, and I love the challenge of that. And I, I love kind of pushing myself to do that at that time. So they were kind of my main drivers. And I guess, you know, as we journey through life, goals change. It's not my focus now, but still running is still my focus. But now I run because I love it, because it's good for me. It gets me up early in the morning and it kind of gets me set up mentally for the mm. day ahead. So there are the reasons why I continue to do it now. Part of running, obviously, is uh, injuries. And um, how do you adjust your mindset when you're dealing with an injury during a training block? Because injuries, look, you, you, you know more about injuries than I do, but injuries really got me down during this at times. But how do you deal with that? Yeah, one is, is there something else I can do? Um, and, and it depends on the injury, of course. But I remember I had a particular injury many, many years ago. And I was training, I was training for, I, I think, a, even a double iron distance at the, at the time. And I remember I couldn't run for a period of time. 
But the particular injury, it didn't stop me swimming and it didn't stop me cycling. So I just kind of poured myself. Now, I got advice. I said, is this OK? And the advice was, mm. it was OK. I just, I guess I controlled the control. That was that was my way of looking at it. Is there something I can do here? Now, if there's not, we also need to respect if we can't for whatever reason. So my attitude to that would be if I can't, if the physio said, no, you can't. My, my mindset now, I've learned this, is... For whatever reason, I'm not meant to exercise at this time. There's some, maybe universal, the universe for some reason doesn't want me to do this. Maybe I just need to heal completely. Maybe my body just needs a break, whatever it is. So it's just trying to find a mindset, that, that tool that might work for you to accept what might be the reality rather than saying, oh my gosh, this is terrible, I can't do it. But maybe there's a bigger reason why. And maybe I'll come back even stronger as a result. Christopher Cribben, who's running the marathon with me, he loves your book, TikTok 10. He wanted me to, he, he said, he wanted me to tell you one of his favourite mottos is you have to get through six to get to 10. Fight through the tough period and get the job done. What does that mean? Yeah, I guess it, it means like if I'm if I'm if you know if I was doing the marathon in, in, in that, that you're going to be doing in, in, in April, it's almost that if I'm on mile six, as you said, you know, and I might be I might be say I'm a little bit challenged in that moment time, whether it's my mindset or just not feeling as strong as I might like, or I'm saying, Oh my gosh, I have another twenty of these to do. Mm. And the way it's a journey, we're on a journey. We have to go through this number six to get to twenty-six, and it's a, it's a reality that we're passing through these numbers. And so that was my simple mantra. It might be, you know, I, I do a lot of company work, corporate talks on high performance, and I thought this could be. You might have to go through a difficult period of the year where sales are down to get. The whole year to get through. So, for example, for some businesses, January might be a quiet month or the summer might be a quiet month. But you have to go through that quiet month to get to maybe the stronger months. And you're just passing through those months. So it was simply it was simply a mantra. Like the, 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 the book that you're referencing is a book called TikTok 10, as you, as you mentioned. And what I was trying to do in that, it was a very different event. It was it was um, what I was trying to do. 10 iron distance triathlons in 10 days. And that was a huge ambition that I had many, many years ago. And it was almost like on day three. And and the days were very, very long. Like they were 14, 15, 16 hour days. And what I remember being in those early days, you know, you have to go through day three to get to 10 because it was a 10 day event. I also, every day I had to do a swim, a cycle and a run. And I remember getting out of the lake on day one. And I'd already, I, I love to, kind of had numbers in my head. And I remember thinking, there's 30 numbers in this event, three every day and 10 days. So you have three things to do every day. And, and if you do those for 10 days, no, that's 30. That's where I got the number 30. And as I got out of the water on the first day, I said, that's number one ticked. And now I'm going to do number two. And that was the cycle that day. I used to love playing with those numbers. Even, you know, I, I used to project a finishing time every day in that event. And think, well, I might be finished by 10 o'clock tonight. And I might be thinking it at four o'clock. Oh my gosh, I still have another six hours to go. I said, but look, four o'clock, you're just passing through four to get to 10 o'clock. Mm. So, because I wanted to kind of get to 10 o'clock so I could rest. So it's just realizing that at any moment in time we are passing through. But if we keep doing what we're supposed to do, sooner or later, the way the universe brings time into our life, that time is guaranteed to come. But we have a responsibility to kind of keep moving forward, to do the things we're supposed to do to get there. So I guess what I've learned, Peter, is so much of this is in the mind. And these are, I love to come up with those kind of mind exercises just to maybe distract me, but also serve as a tool to kind of help me stay positive when I might be feeling a little bit down or or lacking in energy or motivation to keep going. Describe to me what it's like when you pass the finish line. The 32 marathons uh, was utter relief. If I'm being honest, that, that we did manage to achieve it. It was a very long, you know, 32, 32 days, but just relief that 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 the event had been the success it was, and that we'd managed to finish it. Uh, for the Ironmans, I just or the Iron Distance, the, the 10, 10 Irons in 10 days, just I want to go to sleep. <laughs> I'm so tired. <laughs> um, just utter, please let me sleep. And um, but you know, what I when I think of maybe other events that I've been lucky enough to do, the, the you know, very often people get that, my gosh, I did it. Mm. For me, I don't necessarily get the 
get that feeling at the finish line. I get that in at five o'clock in the morning in the third month of training when I might have run. So if I was training for an event in June, I live to run early in the morning. And at the time, I live to exercise early in the morning in the different disciplines. But I could be, I might be doing an event in June or July, but in February, I'd be out running at five o'clock in the morning, maybe finished at six. That, that really rocks my world, getting right. really early and excellent. And I, I might be finishing exercise or out in the pouring rain on a mile 10 of a 10 mile run. And that for me is truly living. And I, that's where I get the happiness. I think, oh my gosh, look, the gift that this morning has given you. Mm. You know, you're out here, you're doing something that you love. And I, was, I guess I was getting that positivity because it comes from exercise. So I become so aware, conscious awareness of the fact that I'm alive. And that's me making the most of that day. So that's when I get the, the really positive benefits of doing, in this case, maybe an ambition. But I get it when I'm on my own early in the morning, when, I, when I'm maybe finishing or immersed in a, in a hard training uh, run or cycle or whatever it would be. Wow. So, Jerry, when you're not running nowadays, what are you up to? I still run most days, but it could be kind of, you know, relative to what I would have done, much smaller distance. Like, typically most mornings I would run three, four, five miles, maybe at the weekends, maybe stretched it up to eight, ten miles, that kind of thing. And I love that. I, I, I do it, as I mentioned earlier, for fun, for fitness, and it just really sets me up for the day. Um, and I, I'm... I'm you know, I I, I I work for myself, work for myself for many, many years, so I'm very busy at that. I love my work. I, I do a lot of kind of inspiration, motivation, keynotes, and I do a lot of deep dive work with companies around vision and strategy and high performance. And I get great energy from that. And I'm very privileged to work with lots of great companies. And, and I, I do, I, I, I'm very privileged to be quite busy at that. So I exercise early in the morning and then I, I'm either gone to my office to prepare work or I'm gone to deliver work. So that Monday to Friday, that keeps me quite busy. You're still running around Mullingar, Jerry, are I am indeed, yeah. I still live in Mullingar and still still running, running around the places I've been running for, for kind of many, many years at this stage. And I still love it as much as I ever loved it. Brilliant. Albeit, I, I, I don't do the, the kind of distances I used to do. There's always a lovely camaraderie when you're running along the Greenway, isn't there? You know, you bump into people you don't know. There's always a hello and word of encouragement. It's just, a, it's a wonderful facility to have, isn't it? It's, it, I think in, in the Midlands, and I think in Ireland as well, there's such now a, an awareness of the resources that we have, whether it's canal banks or Greenways. And I think there's more and more of them coming. Like there, And, you know, we probably bumped into each other on that because I, I, would, I would be there quite often on the Greenway or on the canal as well. It's my happy place. The Greenway is my happy place. Mm. I just love it so much. And, and I love, and I know sometimes you can see a mile in front of you, you know, and uh, I love that. Just love that the quietness of it, the beauty of it, the camaraderie of it, because it, it won't be long before somebody will pass you, whether it's on a bike or a cycle yeah. or, or, or you know, whatever it might be. And uh, there's a lovely, there's a lovely, wonderful coffee shop uh, and, and kind of a deli kind of on at Streamstown there Streams as well. Streamstown, yeah. It is fabulous. Um, and uh, so I love going out there as well. So it's, it's you know, that we didn't have that kind of 10, 15 years ago. I think it's great, not just that we have it, but that it's so, it's so valuable. People really use it. And I know we're just talking about one in particular between Mullen and Law, but there's so many of those being created yeah. in so many parts of the country now. Jerry, thank you so much for your time. I really love the chat. I could listen to you all day, honest to God. Really taking in so much from this. I have a list of people I wanted to speak to and you're you're the first one on it. So uh, thanks so much, Jerry. You're very welcome. And good luck with your own. I, I know good, good luck with your recovery from the injury. Mm, thanks. And good luck with the training when you do get back to it. And good luck in Manchester in, in, in April as well. Thanks, Emil. We're going to try the Mullingar half as well on uh, St. Patrick's Day. So hopefully all going well, we'll we'll complete that and then we'll we'll move on to Manchester. So fingers crossed and he was Jerry fingers crossed so we're trying our best to raise as much as we can for Barristown Children's Charity they do incredible work for boys and girls all across the Midlands and all around the country and we the people of the Midlands want to show our appreciation so if you can donate it would make a huge difference in the lives of children and families who are coping with serious illness you can click on midlands103.com right now you'll find Get Active the first thing you'll see on our website is Get Active you can click on that and you can make your donation through I Donate. Get Active with Midlands 183 powered by HearMed Healthcare in the heart of Tullamore here when you need us HearMed.ie